Hello and welcome to the Outdoor Gibbon podcast, episode 30, The Stalking Show Sneak Peek. The Stalking Show is almost three weeks away. I think it could well be less. And I thought what I'd do is I would bring you a little podcast, a very short one, that we actually get to chat to David Freer, who is the event organiser. And we kind of find out a bit of history about the show, why it came into being, what you can expect to see when you get to the show. But before we get into that, I've got a little tiny competition we're actually going to run at the Stalking Show. So this little tiny competition works in the following way. You will find me either on a stand at the Stalking Show or if you bump into me around the show. I need off you your name, email address and phone number. We'll enter it into my tablet and it will give you a number. We will randomly select five numbers at the end, probably on Sunday night, if not Monday. And we will let you know if you've won. So what are the prizes that you could win? Well, prize number one is stag stalking in the Angus Glens up at Wells Sporting and you'll be taken guided on the hill by myself. Prize number two, we must say thank you to Richie Nanks Knives. He's giving us a pair or giving the winner a pair of his naked knives, a set of them. So I think that's the knife and the little unzipper. Num- prize number three massive thank you again to Ben at Deer Central. He is giving a prize there of one of his three-point leather slings. Really nice piece of kit to have. Number four, again, thank you very much to uh, the, the very talented Katie Hargreaves. She is giving us, I believe, one of the, the books of the species of deer from the UK. And prize number five, you get the chance to win one of the outdoor gibbon beanies. So again, to enter that, you just need to find me at the show. Give me your name, address and email. We'll enter it into the system. It will give you a number. You can enter yourself, your friends, but it has to be at the show. There's not going to be an opportunity otherwise. It's purely for the people that come to the show. We will draw the numbers and we will get in contact with the five winners and then hopefully somebody will get an absolutely fantastic uh, fantastic prize from that so if you know somebody that was umming and ahhing about coming to the show make them come along it's only 15 quid if you buy your tickets now as david explains later on in the podcast and uh, there's some great opportunities as well as obviously my little competition there that's free to enter there are some other fantastic competitions running throughout the show I won't tell you any more about it. We will listen to David now, who is going to explain all about the stalking show and some of the things that uh, you have a chance of winning. Anyway, let's get on with it. Just one quick disclaimer. Obviously, this is the stalking show in 2024. If you are listening to this in 2025, things will be very different and the show may be very different again. But this is the 2024 stalking show. Hello and welcome to the Outdoor Given Podcast. Today on the show, we have got David Freer. He is the event organiser of the Stalking Show. How are you doing, David? Yes, hello, Peter. Good evening. Yes, very well, thanks, mate. Thank you for having me on. Excellent. No problem at all. Well, I thought this would be kind of a, a good show to actually basically give people a bit of information as to what they would expect to find at the stalking show but i think what we really need to talk about first is let's talk about how the stalking show actually came into being how did you kind of come up with the idea um i suppose i had a little bit of a head start uh really for the simple reason um my past life throughout throughout most of my life i've been involved in so uh, events of some description or another so uh, so for 30 years now, I've been organising various events. It might be a, uh, a Sunday market. We do uh, we've we've uh, we've organised supercar shows and classic car shows uh, and, a, and a number of different events of uh, th- uh, over the years. So I had a kind of a little bit of a, a head start with that. Um, and I think I suppose uh, to tell you the absolute truth, um, 
uh, COVID, the dreaded COVID word, uh, it broke out in 20, very, very early 2020. Right, yeah. Um, Deanne and I, my wife Deanne uh, and I were, um, were commuting between Scotland and Leicestershire, where we, uh, where we lived uh, at that time. And uh, just um, and the uh, the business was then completely basically uh, finished or wiped out overnight because events, as you know, and gatherings were uh, were, um, uh, were were unable to happen. So uh, so we were we were kind of taking a little bit of a rain check on life um, right. in general. Um, anyway, cut a long story short, we. Um, we we decided to move where we where we we've had big connections for many many years. We moved to Argyll in West Scotland in 2020, early 2020, um, and um, uh, and we we were in our local uh, pub, if you right, like down the road, speaking with a very good friend of ours, Carl and Sandra. And uh, he's a big shooting man. I'm a big shooting man. The whole, all four of us are really connected with, uh, you know, outdoors, stalking, shooting, dogs and all the rest of it. And we uh, probably grumbling about the old days, like probably a lot of us does, about how yep. shows used to be when we used to go to, and I won't name any names, but when we used to go to some of the shows, you'd spend probably two days down Gunmaker's Row and things like that. And, and, I, and I can Absolutely. see you nodding. So yeah, think, yeah, no, absolutely. Tend, tend to agree, and um, we um, we were just sitting there grumbling one night about some of uh, you know what we liked and what we used to enjoy, and uh, how things have changed. And uh, you know, rightly or wrongly, things have changed for a lot of the shows, um, and there a lot of the shows now are more. Uh, would say country shows that's right uh, yeah, yeah. and that but they do have you know they, there's a there's a very very big varied amount of uh, exhibitors and what have you and uh, and and uh, um, uh, exhibitors and visitors that come to the show which is great yeah. uh, there's nothing wrong with that um but the shows that you and I used to enjoy when we grew up in the 80s and the 90s uh, I've, I've, I've somewhat changed. So, yes. cut a long story short, we all looked at each other and said, well, let's do our own show. Let's do a show that we want and we enjoy and what we think other people will enjoy. Okay. And that is honestly how the Stalking Show was born. We sat there in this uh, in the Coilet pub just down the road from me with friends and said, uh, we all looked at each other and said, yeah, let's do a Stalking Show. And uh, and we spent the next probably four months, uh, five, six months um, uh, in and out of the pub every night. We'd uh, have a drink, sit there around the big the, the big table. And we were just literally writing out plans of what we would want and what we would like and how it should should operate and run and what would what within, you know, what we'd bring to the show, what sections we wanted to cover because there's so much that you can, you know, you can uh, go. Yeah, down. no, absolutely. And and uh, and and, uh, and that was really where the stalking show was born. And but uh, and we just kept the ball rolling, and uh, and and really did, you know, as it gathered momentum, we went to several different uh, venues, and uh, we started actually off at one venue, and we uh, we we quickly learned that. The venue that we decided we were going to go to just wasn't going to be adequate because of the interest that was okay. immediately coming in. And we thought, oh, hang on a minute. This is, uh, you know, we, we were we were only like six months in and then and then realized that we'd outgrown a venue before we would even tried it. Fantastic. And, uh, and, and that's that really is the truth. So we went yeah, yeah. to we went to two or three others, which uh, we went to. Um, I think it was Peterborough Showground. We went to Stonely, where where other shows have been. Uh, we went to um, uh, various others, and we settled on Staffordshire County Showground, um, right in the middle of the country, really, uh, just off the M6. And a uh, great location. We liked that very rural feel to it. It's, um, you know, the still hold county showground, uh, county shows there. And yeah. they have a lot of rural stuff around there. So we, we just like that. And it was midway between the north and the south. 
Well, it seemed to work. The park, because uh, this is obviously, this will be my third year of coming. So I've been to all of them. And I've always found there's never been an issue with parking. It's great. You're actually, you're not walking miles and you've not kind of got to get on some sort of um, bus or even pay for the parking. That's that's another really nice one. It, it, there's no charge for parking, which is great. No. Uh, well, just touching on that, do you know what? Um, the uh, uh, Staffordshire County Showground actually have a policy written in the contract that uh, car parking charges are, uh, are, are not allowed. We, right. can, we, can, we can offer a VIP parking, which is like, and I mean literally right up front, but we can't we can't actually no nobody can charge for the parking so that's well I'll tell you that. I'll tell you something last year I was in a in a van because obviously my pickup had broken and I remember coming through the gate and the guy obviously thought that I was either an exhibitor or or a VIP so yeah. I had VIP parking right next to a police car right literally on the path at the front I've never parked as close to the door as possible and it sounds like you got it for free as well Oh, I had I had my VIP parking for free, so obviously I didn't have to pay for that. So there you go. Don't charge me now. But yeah, it was uh, the guy just said park over there in your van. There you go. Job done. There you go. Right. OK. Well, yes, it's all we like everything to be very, very free and easy at the Stalking Show. There's no mm. there's, there's no we don't want anybody to be, uh, you know, uh, upset or anything. So everything has to be nice and easy. So obviously it's this is its third year and I'm assuming uh, because it, because it's its third year, what it, it's growing in size. I believe you've moved. You were in one or two halls last year. I think you're moving up into three this time. Is it? Well, yes, actually, um, yeah. Well, well, to get, to put it into some perspective, uh, Pete. Um, uh, year one, we had uh, taken every exhibitor in uh, in into the count. We had ninety four, I think ninety four, else ninety five uh, exhibitor stands in total. That's the that's yep. the super big ones and the very little ones. Uh, for for um, for twenty twenty four, in four weeks time. We will, or in uh, a few weeks' time, we will have 246 stands, wow. uh, exhibitor that, stands. That's so, a certainly a growth, isn't it? And that, that um, just goes to show that people obviously want to want to be there and come to the show. Well, sadly as well. Um, well, not sadly. It isn't sad. It's a, it's a good. Uh, it's good. Um, it's good for us. Uh, we've we've turned. Uh, we have a waiting list. And we and we've actually turned quite a few down because we don't want to grow the show too quickly. We want to, you know, we want to make sure that we we vet every every stand that comes to the stalking show is vetted. We honestly, you will not, and and you've been to every one, so you will you will stand by what I say. You will not see, uh, and I have nothing against them because I love a good hot tub, but you won't see <laughs> hot tubs. You won't you won't see um, UPVC see windows. Um, pillowcases or wicker baskets or anything else that doesn't fit what 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 I'm saying is on the tin. It is um, it's a stalking show. It's hunting, stalking. Um, you know, we 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 do. You know, we branch out into obviously food and various things and butchery equipment, but it does have to have a link with what the show is all about. So, um, you know, we 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 get a number of um, exhibitors ringing us up. Can we bring this? Can we bring that? And we just simply say to them straight away, yeah, fine. Can we have your website details? Let's have a look at that. What are you bringing to the show? And if it doesn't fit, I'm saying very sorry. Um, it's not for us. And, that, and that's how we operate. But I think that's great because, as you say, at least the show then is dedicated to what people are going there for people want to go to a show and they want to walk around and they want to look at a gun maker or they want to buy some clothing or they want to talk to some guy that sells some targets or some um some other bits or they they want a knife or something like that and they don't want to be trawling through a guy that's trying to sell them a plumbing fit in and a upvc window and a hot tub and and, and unfortunately i've been to shows and i was helping a friend out of the show and we got lost we got pushed to the end of his store got pushed to the end of of like gun makers row and we weren't getting the throughput we weren't getting the traffic we should be getting because people didn't want to go down that because of the rest of the stands that were there and it, it, it's just one of those it's quite it's a disappointing situation to be in whereas obviously yeah if you vetted everybody and the people that are coming are 
dedicated to to the, the the hunting world let's just say it's ideal isn't it yeah yeah no ab- absolutely and and it, it takes me back to our opening words uh when when you asked me about uh you know where did the stalking show come from and you know i i i always put myself in the visitor uh the, you know the, vi- the 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 average guy like i was many years ago walking around what i wanted to see and yeah. uh, if i walk around my show and i and i walk down uh, uh, a row let's say and uh, half the half the exhibitors down there, I am not interested in slightly. Then I'm doing my job wrong. There's something wrong. So because I want, uh, I, I I would like all all our visitors to walk down a row and every stand they go to at least spend a few minutes just looking at what it is. We there is a you know certainly a wide variety of what we have. Is the show is not just about ammo and guns and rifles it certainly isn't you know there's 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 um, all a manner of things you know there's all the clothing various clothing we have a lot for ladies we have some really superb artists there and and so on and uh yeah you know uh so but but as long as as long as it it fits what the show's about then then you're welcome so is there anything different and exciting that's coming up this year that we haven't seen over the last two years um i, I every every year we we you know we finish a show we finish a show and then we come away and we think right we always look at the bits that didn't quite either work or or where we want to introduce something else and uh, and and we, we, the show is still very very young and and we've got lots we want to bring in over the next few years um uh, and simple answer to your question, Pete. Yes, definitely. Um, and we try and bring something uh, that's that's very special to the show each year, or 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 equally grow on something, grow something that's gone very well. In, a, in okay. so so, for instance, give you an example. Um, I had this crazy idea last year that we're going to do a deer calling competition. Um, I've I've seen it done in some of the american shows where you put you know you can put it into youtube yeah, yeah. you see these guys all dressed up doing fancy calls of elk and various things and then they it, i also know it's very big um uh, uh on the continent with our uh, with our european friends it is they, yes they literally come from all over uh europe to go to some of the shows doing deer calling so why not have it in the uk um, so I, I, I tested that we, we wanted to test the water last year. So we brought it. We got some wonderful prizes. I, I don't know whether you remembered it, whether you saw it, but we had yeah. uh, Peter from Swarovski or Swarovski gave us a lovely pair of binoculars. And we had a um, uh, Thomas Jacks gave us a really nice uh, thermal imaging uh, spotting okay. sp- spot. Yep. So we had we had these two fantastic prizes. Um, we had this deer calling competition. It was a little bit thrown together, like right, okay. We had Scott McKenzie from the Isle of Sky, the gamekeeper, uh, and we had Rob Crampton from Best Fox Call, two great That's guys right. to do the job. And uh, we had, and we just literally invited people up, as you saw, to come and do uh, their own deer call, whether it was a stag, a buck, or a seeker stag, whichever it may be. And and we had we we had the most wonderful hour or so on each day uh a young boy of i think he was eight or nine won the thermal and the and and a guy won the the binoculars the next day well um it was it was so successful we we received so many great comments and everybody sitting there with a beer in the hand having a laugh pushing the mate up go on go and have a go and and it sort of rolled on a little bit I didn't see you have a go, unfortunately, but I but I have I have been told that you're pretty keen to have a go this year. But, but we'll we'll put that on the shelf to one for one minute. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. I'm but, I'm a bit rusty on my seeker calls, but I can uh, I, I might uh, might have a go. You never know. Brilliant. Depends but, how busy uh, I am with other things. Yeah, but um, so so uh, in total answer to your question, yes, we've got the we've expanded very much on the deer calling competition. Uh, Harkila 
have actually sponsored the whole thing. So they've given over, you can't see them, but just over there on our other table, they've just sent me a, a heap of uh, really nice jackets. We've got a ladies, a gents, and uh, a young uh, a youngsters jacket as well. Oh, fantastic. So there'll, so there'll be... There'll be three winners on the Saturday and three winners on the Sunday. So uh, um, a lady, gent and a younger person. Uh, we've got some fabulous prizes. We've got uh, Leopold scopes. We've got uh, infrared um, uh, 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 thermals. We've got another pair of Swarovski binoculars. We've got Ember Leaf knives. So we're going to be giving all these away with um, uh, Harkeela clothing at the deer calling competition so we're we've we're expanding massively on that wow. um uh that's going to be live streamed uh onto a huge uh, uh five meter screen so if you're standing on the balcony or wherever you can watch the deer calling competition um i'll let you into a small secret we've got a scottish piper so uh, we've got a fantastic Scottish piper coming down from the Isle of Skye. He's going to open the show, oh, wow. um, okay. uh, which will be lovely. Uh, just a nice touch. And we'll also have, he will also uh, open the deer calling competition. So when you hear the piper at uh, one o'clock midday or one o'clock lunchtime, uh, he'll be, that will be the uh, time for the deer calling competition. Um uh, other things that are going on, we've expanded in the dog ring. We've got uh, um, a Tekel show this year that we didn't have last year, organised by um, Tekel, Tekel's work and Mark Inge is organising that. And I, and I believe he's doing a fantastic job. And there are other, um, uh, there are other um, dog uh, groups there as well, the Hungarian wire-haired Vizzlers and German wire-haired uh, Bavarian Mountain House and Cawthorn Griffins. So we've got quite a few dogs. So we're, we're expanding on that. Um, and I think another highlight I'll just quickly touch on uh, in the really wild kitchen. Uh, so in our kitchen theatre with Jose Suto and Rachel Green, we've got another great competition um, that Jose is uh, Jose and Rachel are hosting, and it's a very very simple one, but it's very very important, and it will be uh, the breakdown. So we're inviting uh, anybody that wants to have a go uh, to literally send me an email, um, uh, register their name, tell me who you are. Uh, we're going to have two heats on the Saturday and two heats on the Sunday, only five in each. So uh, uh, 10 o'clock and two o'clock on each day. Um, you're not going to be up against the clock or anything like that. It's a simple uh, uh, muntjac haunch. You'll have a fresh muntjac haunch. You'll, uh, you'll be asked to butcher them into, break them down into the, uh, into the different muscles, um, set them out on a board. As simple as that. There's no time, no nothing. Just do it the way you do it. And Jose and Rachel will judge it. And again, I, I kid you not, Peter, we have the most off the scale prizes. We've got, uh, you know, we, we've got um, thousands of pounds of prizes to give away. We've got scopes, Steiner scope uh, with a uh, with a range finder as first prize, okay, right, which is wow. about yeah. two grand, I'm, I'm told. Yeah, yeah. We've got uh, a, um, uh, a set of knives from Flint and Flame. They're professional knives. Uh, and I must say that Flint and Flame are sponsoring this particular part of the show. So they've oh, been amazing. But we've, we've got more prizes as well. Um, so it, it looks as though basically everybody that's going to come to the stalking set, there's a good chance that you're going to come. If, if you want to enter into something there's going to be a good chance that yeah. you've got good odds of actually winning something. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. And I think Jose's, um, there's a video, I think uh, Alex from the Hunter Gatherer has just popped a video up to to support this. So if anybody is listening to this and wants to find out about that, uh, that, um, that butchery competition, go and, well, we'll put a link in the, in the description so you can go and find it, go and have a look. Jose explains everything so that, uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I've been practicing already, so uh, I've got eight deer in the in the chiller at the moment, and everyone <laughs> the haunch is being broken down. Be I would never normally do it, but it's being broken down beautifully. 
well done. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so so we're, we're, we're getting our, uh, our practice in there. But it sounds as though it's going to be a, a very busy and full day for anybody that comes. And hopefully they're they're going to go either get a prize or they're going to go home filling their shopping bags with some with some great kit that there's going to be loads of people selling there. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, you know, I, I I I always sit down and look at what I want to see at a show. Um, and uh, yeah, t- t- touching on what you've just said there, you alluded to uh, shopping bags. I speak to all our retailers. And and I gently encourage them and the distributors to try and put the best deals they can on for something, whatever they, you know, if it's Harkeela, if it's, uh, uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's Thomas Jacks, then, you know, and thermals and various things. And uh, uh, and I, I gently ask them all and say, look. You know, it's a show that we all we all love. We all need to get involved in. Um, and, uh, you know, let's make it let's make the stalking show something that we can all be proud of everybody. Um, uh, and and I ask them very kindly to try and do the best deals they can. And so that uh, people can, uh, you know, our visitors can pick up something at the stalking show uh, at, at, a, at a real very fair price. Um, well, I think that was the thing. Show, show show deals kind of died, didn't they? Uh, and over the last few years, you used, you, you used to go to the show to get a good deal. And all, there was always a way of like, what can you do for this and that? And you'd always you used to be able to get something. Then the Internet hours came along and everything was rock bottom. And of course, a lot of the 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 guys there at the shows they didn't have the ability to give you a better price but if if you've asked them nicely and hopefully they're, they're going to do that then people will actually feel that they're actually there's a show deal to be had here so it makes life it's that little double bubble isn't it really that everybody's happy that they've come along and they've, they've gone away with something that uh, they may not have got as good as off the internet yeah yeah you know even if it's even if it's just as simple as you know you can't buy it anywhere cheaper than at the stalking show if you know there may be there may be something out there that you really want and you can shop round and and every and you can't get it uh you know as long as you can't find it cheaper elsewhere then i'm happy and uh and as and you know and th- and this is what you know this is what i talk to with all the retailers and uh and the distributors and just say look you know come on guys you know let's you know you you support the show but you've got to you've got to try and put something on that uh, that uh, you know is you know is just just a, you know a, a real great deal and you know gets everybody buzzed about coming to the show and and yeah you know it's and, and it can only be good for everybody. No, absolutely, and I think in this day and age, I think that that's the best bit. And actually, to be honest, I've, I've, many of the people I've spoken to, this this show as well is one of those things where. I think a lot of people come as well to actually catch up with people they haven't seen for a while mm. um, and guys that st- the, the stalking community and the shooting community. It's actually quite small, really, when you you pull it apart. So yeah. I think this is one of those points where you can get guys from like the north come and see their friends from the south, et cetera, et cetera. So, again, it's that place that you can all come and have a chat. And it's a it's a it's a nice day out as well, really. Yeah, we're um, uh, we're very lucky, as as we said earlier, we're very centrally located, um, and uh, on we, we're selling tickets. I, you know, every time we sell a ticket, it pings up on my phone, and the and the only thing I ever want to look at is actually where the ticket is going. Right. It's all I'm interested in, and and I've seen tickets going to the Isle of Skye. I've seen tickets going right up to the north where you are. Yep. I've seen, you know, several, you know, lots of tickets uh, to over the border and into Scotland, which is great. I, I always love to see that. Um, we've got, uh, we've sold a lot of tickets this year, more than more than the other two years uh, to Southern Ireland and Ireland. Uh, we've had phone calls from I, uh, uh, right down in the uh, down in Southern Ireland asking us asking me whether whether they should buy a day ticket or a two day ticket and of Fantastic. course I, of course i say to them no you definitely need a two day ticket you're <laughs> going to spend you're going to spend a day 
talking to everybody and then you're going to spend a day looking at everything <laughs> but that that's how shows used to be and it, it, it it's still yeah it, it's one of those things you go there and you, you probably end up sat there chatting away or you'll get around half the show if you if you like to talk and suddenly realize oh it's closing now and i haven't seen everything so day two is you can cover the rest of it but uh oh, yeah. that's good that's really good i don't yeah i don't i don't think uh I don't think anybody's going to say now that uh, the Stalking show is, yeah, it's a nice show, but it's a small show. Um, I don't think, uh, if I was a visitor coming now uh, for the first time and to walk around the Stalking show, you're going to definitely need, you're going to do well to get round everything in a day. If you, you know, if you're looking, if you're looking for something very quick and, uh, you know, and, and, and precise, then yes, you might want to just go and look at that in particular, get it underway. That's fine. But if you're coming to look at everything that's there and, you know, chat to a few people, you're not going to do it in a day. Well, especially now. if you want to sit down and watch one of the demonstrations yes. or, or listen to somebody t- t- do something or or watch that the, the, the calling competition. Again, time goes by and it goes by so quickly when you get there. It's amazing how fast the day actually flies by, really. Yeah. Yes. No, exactly. Peter, you've got to, you've got to allow, uh, you've got to allow an hour and a half to two hours now for the deer calling competition. If you want to see, uh, everybody, you know, everybody get up and have a go. Um, we've got, um, Jose, as, as I said, and Rachel green in the really wild kitchen. They do wonderful things. Uh, Jose, uh, as you, I'm sure you've seen, uh, he breaks down, uh, skins a wild boar in front of your very eyes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and and I wouldn't like to do that, I have to say, because they are, uh, uh, you know, I have touched them. I've never skinned a wild boar, but I think it's like playing with a bar of soap. It's uh, not it's not much fun. Having having done that, uh, that big one that I took up in Inverness. Yeah. And that was at 10 o'clock at night trying to get it back in a chiller. It wasn't uh, it wasn't much fun at all. No, no, no. So uh, so watching Jose do that and then he breaks it down. Uh, on both Saturday and Sunday doing the wild boar, uh, you know, so that it, it does kill a lot of time very quickly. So Yeah. So um, what we'll do now is if there's any, I think we've, we've pretty much covered everything there. Let's just tell people, because obviously they they can't see the picture that I'm looking at. So I'm looking at David sat there and behind him, there's a great big sign. Just so you all know, the, the stalking show is on the 13th and the 14th of April. So this podcast should hit the hit, um, release date of the end of the month so which we're in March now so you should hear this show on the 1st of April so it gives you two weeks to get yourselves organised and decide that you're going to go to the stalking show get your tickets ordered can they buy tickets on the day? Yes absolutely yes but I would uh, um, I would strongly advise Peter that people do buy their tickets online because there's a £5 saving on every ticket £15 online uh, youngsters um, are five pounds. Don't ask me the ages; I can't remember. And then very, very little ones are free, of course. Um, but then, if you buy tickets on the day, it's twenty quid. So uh, we still think everything's very, re- we, you know, we, we like to keep it reasonable as we can. But obviously, if you buy them online, uh, it, there's there's five pounds saving, and that's a burger and a cup of tea. Oh, it's talking show. Totally. So so yeah, basically. In the comments, uh, not in the comments, but in the description of this, there'll be all the links to it. So you can, if you are keen, uh, and it is the 2024 stalking show, you'll be able to click on the link, and it'll take you straight to the the page. You can buy your tickets, and uh, and then come and see me and David at the stalking show. Yeah, thanks ever so much, Peter. I've no, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, if anybody's got any questions, obviously, yet yeah, fire them across. Fire them over to David as an email address. that will be on there as well. And uh, we'll we'll see you on either the 13th or the 14th of April. Spot on. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Yeah, been brilliant. Thanks for listening to that little update about the stalking show. Hopefully we will see you on either Saturday or Sunday at the show. Come along and say hello. Uh, Grab a sticker and other things like that from the stand. Have a chat with myself or Alex. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the day and uh, you can tell me if there's anything else you'd like to hear on the podcast.